my name is Jacka and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm an artist and designer and I love to make videos about all things creative and colorful. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I animated this super cute work from home lettering into this super cute... <laughs> Take a shot every time I say super cute. No, don't. And for today's video, I'm going to show you how I animated this super cute work from home lettering into this equally just as cute GIF sticker. This tutorial is going to be a bit complicated, but I promise you, I'm going to take you through the steps carefully. And by the end of it, you'll have something to show on your social media and be like, I did that. Now, here's how I prepared my Procreate layers for animation. At the very bottom, my background, I have a layer for my laptop. The text will be appearing on the screen as the flamingo types on the keyboard. So I have 10 frames for that little animation. And right above everything else, I have a group for my flamingo. Body flattened into one layer. And right above that, I have a group for the flamingo's head. So if we open the head group, I have the base of the head also flattened into one layer, and then another subgroup for the eyeball, which let's open up the eyeball as well. Weird sentence. At the bottom, I have the, the white part of the eyeball, the base of the flamingo's eyeball, and then its little pupil, which I've set on a clipping mask. And then on top of that, I just duplicated this white part of the eyeball and changed the color of it to a darker pink so that we can kind of make our flamingo blink. And the very, very top of this eyeball group, I have the eyelashes, a layer for its foot. And on top of all of that is three different versions of this illustrated coat and my sparkles because of course, it can't be a jack illustration without my sparkles. And we cannot forget our watermark because it's very important for people to know where they can find more of our art. So once I'm happy with how I've prepared my layers for animation, I just click this little wrench icon up here and under the share menu option, I click PSD, which is a Photoshop file, and I just airdrop that to my Mac or you can just email that Photoshop file to yourself. After Effects, let's set our composition settings to square pixels with a frame rate of 12 and a duration of 5 seconds. Hit OK and this will automatically apply to all of our Photoshop files that we'll import later on so we can just delete this. And to import your Photoshop file, click File, Import, File and double click on the Photoshop file. And in this pop-up, make sure that this composition dash retain layer sizes is selected as well as editable layer styles is checked. Hit OK. Ah! Okay, phew, we're good. Yes, so let's open our main composition and start by animating the laptop. Select our 10 typing animation frames and then move the playhead to around frame 5, which you're gonna see right here. Then press Alt close bracket and that's gonna trim down all of these 10 layers. And to add some variety, I'm going to extend type 2 by about 1 frame and I'm gonna shorten type 3 by 1 frame. So type 3 is going to be 4 frames long, type 2 is going to be 6 frames song so it's gonna look like the flamingo is like pausing for a little bit which is gonna make the animation look more natural then arrange all your type layers so it's gonna show up one at a time animation keyframe assistant sequence layers make sure overlap is unchecked and hit ok and also make sure that all of the type layers are visible and if we scrub through our animation it's going to look like something is being gradually typed on the screen so we're done with our laptop, let's move on to the flamingo. In our keyboards, you're gonna see that some of the keys are in a darker shade of green, and that's gonna guide us on where to place the flamingo head. So I'm just gonna hide the text layers just so we're not confused by it. And let's select the flamingo group, and using the puppet pin tool right here, I'm gonna create eight pins going from the tip of the beak the base of the flamingo's head, two along its neck, one at the base of the neck, one in the middle of the flamingo's body, 
one at the base of the tail, and lastly at the tip of its tail. Now we're mostly going to animate these one, two, three, four pins all along the flamingo's head, and the last two pins on its tail. And then these pins in the middle are just meant to keep the flamingo's body steady throughout the animation. Now this part's gonna be a bit tricky, so be sure to listen, but to make things simple, we'll start with the main movements first, and then finesse the animation as we go along. So, starting at the beginning of our timeline, with the flamingo hole layer selected, press U on your keyboard, which will show us all of our puppet pin layers and keyframes at the beginning of our timeline. Let's move our flamingo head so that the tip of its beak looks like it's hitting this darker green button of the keyboard. Next, move our playhead right where the next frame of our typing animation starts. And then instead of selecting all eight of our puppet pins, just select these first four ones along the head and neck of the flamingo, and then click the diamond button to create a new second keyframe right there. And you'll notice that the darker green keyboard button's over here, so let's move our flamingo beak so it looks like it's hitting that key, and then adjust the rest of its neck and head accordingly. And you kind of want to do this for the rest of these 10 frames of laptop animation, creating keyframes for these four puppet pins only, and then adjusting the placement of the tip of the flamingo's beak, like so. And then when you reach the very, very end, select all of these eight keyframes at the beginning of our animation, hit Command C to copy it, and Command V to paste these keyframes at the end of our animation. One move it over so it's gonna help loop the animation and if we hit play we're gonna end up with something that looks like this which looks weird and unnatural and looks like it's stirring a pot with its beak let's fix that let's make it look a lot nicer i'm gonna move the playhead to about the fourth frame of our animation so just around two thirds between the first keyframe and the second keyframe i'm gonna adjust the flamingo's head so that it kind of points upward and it's gonna look like this which gives it some anticipation in the movement so i'm just gonna do the same thing for the rest of our animation and you'll notice that i'm only adding keyframes to these last two puppet pins on the flamingo. And if you want to follow exactly where I place these keys, I'm gonna leave some time codes on the screen so that you know where to place these next set of keys. Oh my god, it looks so cute already! So, we can kind of stop right here if you want, but if you really want to finesse the movement a teensy tiny bit, it's so cute. If you really want to finesse the movement a teensy tiny bit more, let's exaggerate the parts where the flamingo clicks each keyboard button. So, going back to the beginning of our timeline, select the keyframes for these two puppet pins. So that will be puppet pin number two and number three. Click Command C to copy it and then move your playhead two frames forward and hit Command V to paste it. Then move your playhead right in the middle of those two keyframes and we're gonna move these last two puppet pins specifically. Not this one, but these two. Move the pin of this beak down so that it really looks like the beak is going down just for a split second to press that keyboard button. And then let's move the head down as well. And the keyframes on your timeline should look like this. This puppet pin at the flamingo's neck should be the same on the first and the third frame of the animation. And the same goes for this puppet pin. It's the same on the first and the third frame, except in the second frame, it kind of dips down a tiny bit. And then for this puppet pin at the tip of the flamingo's beak, it goes from up to down like that. And you just want to do the same pattern of keyframes at the beginning of where the flamingo hits the keyboard. So to recap, copy the keyframes for these two puppet pins, move down two frames forward, paste it, and then move your playhead between those two sets of keyframes, and then move the flamingo's beak down, as well as the base of the flamingo's head. And then just do the same for the rest of our typing animation. 
And now we have this super cute animation that looks like this. This is the hardest part, so if you've made it through, congratulations. But let's add some more life to it. Double click the flamingo hole layer, and then double click on the head composition, and again on the eyeball layer. And this is why we have to name our layers, because look at this. Now I have to like figure out which one's which. Let's shorten this blank layer to one frame. I'm just gonna press Alt close bracket to do that. Move it to about here, 104. Press Command D to duplicate this blank layer. Move the duplicate over to 304 of our composition. Of course, make sure both blank layers are set to visible so that we can see it. And if we hit play, it's just gonna, it's just the simplest blank animation you could ever do. So we're done with that. And the last but not the least is the tail swing. And this is really, really incredibly easy. We're basically just gonna move puppet pin 8, which is the very, very tip for flamingo tail, and make it swing back and forth like this. Now we already have the first and the last keyframe of our animation. So let's make another one at 108. And then again at 305. Now let's go back to the 10th frame of our timeline, which should be between these two keyframes. Make a keyframe there. And on this keyframe, let's move the tip of our flamingo tail to the right. Now copy this second keyframe over at 207 and at 403. And now we have three loops of our flamingo tail swing. And for the final touch, which I kind of forgot to mention earlier, but I've already done it, um, you'll notice that the keyframes, instead of diamonds, they're now this different shape. Now, what I did to do that is I selected all these keyframes and I press F9 on the keyboard. And that adds some easing into our animation, which basically just smoothens out our movement. And that's it! We are done with the hardest part of this animation. Now let's just bring back our text layers. Select text layer 1, 2, and 3. Press Command Shift C. It's called Precompose. Rename that. Make sure these two options are selected. Hit OK. And that's gonna make its own composition, which if we double click on that, will show us these three layers from earlier. Move your playhead to about two frames over. With all three layers selected, press Alt close bracket to trim those layers down to two frames long, and then sequence the layer out so that they play one after the other. Select all three of my text layers, hit Command D to duplicate it, and I'm just gonna move all these new duplicated layers up and out, make another loop that plays out after the first loop. And then when you get to the end of your timeline, you'll notice that these three frames don't really quite fit the five second duration, but that's okay, that's fine. So I'm just gonna close this text comp and go back to our main composition. And when we hit play, it looks like this! But very, very last thing we need to fix, you'll notice that the flamingo is being covered a teeny tiny bit by the words home and club, which we kind of just want the flamingo's head to pop out a bit. So let's add some masking. Duplicate your comp text layer, and then bring the first one underneath our flamingo hole layer. Now, with this first text layer selected, click the pen tool and draw a mask all around the words and the sparkles, excluding the letters HO of home. And you'll also want to exclude the whole of the word club. And just like that, we're done with our animation! And once you're happy with your animation, select your timeline panel just to make sure that it's selected. And then up in your composition menu options, click add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. And this is just going to open up another Adobe program that I like to use to export my Premiere and After Effects videos. And under format, I like to use the default option H.264. And for preset, I also just go with the default, which is match source dash high bit rate and then select where you want to save your file i usually just save it in my desktop and then hit the play button to export your animation 
leave me a comment what type of procreate to after effects tutorials do you want to see me make or even just within procreate tutorials like i can i actually have a whole bunch of videos that i already made like i have a whole playlist of procreate to after effects tutorials as well as GIF sticker tutorials that are animated just within Procreate so you can check that out right here and that is it for this video I really hope you enjoyed it and if you did don't forget to hit the like button it really helps with the YouTube algorithm as well as subscribe to my channel for more art and creative content like this and as always create your own adventures and I'll see you in the next video